about 11 o'clock in the morning. Been driving for about three hours. But we're not far away now from Great Yarmouth, which will be the finish line for the Sunrise Ultra, which is 83 miles, 133 kilometers or so, which will be starting at about uh, 3.30 this afternoon. We're gonna get a bus from the finish line to the start line so uh, we can start the race and then when we get back to the finish I'll have my car to drive home so very handy uh, Norfolk is very flat we're going to be running along the Norfolk coast path uh, it's not going to be very hilly so <laughs> it's just going to be a flat run for 83 miles We're at the car park at Great Yarmouth. Uh, we've got half an hour before the bus leaves. Uh, so I'm getting changed in the car. Uh, we've got an hour's journey or an hour and a half bus journey to Snettisham, which is where the start of the race is uh, 83 miles that way. Um, so everything I'm gonna wear is on the back seat here, on, on the back shelf here. So I've got my buff hat, uh, my race belt, my waterproof jacket, uh, my shorts, I'm, I'm wearing my top um, and then uh, my underwear as well. Um, has, as has become customary, I've got some rice pudding to eat on the bus. <laughs> um, uh, I've got a warm layer uh, here, uh, required by mandatory kit. Um, and then everything else is in my Salomon uh, race uh, belt, my race vest here. Uh, so um, there is uh, waterproof uh, trousers, uh, a waterproof jacket there, um, then uh, long sleeve top and long sleeve trousers as well. Um, medical kit or like a, you know emergency plasters and things like that. Um, I've obviously got my hydration bottles, my Salomon soft flasks, filtered flasks, not that I'll need water filtered in Norfolk, but there we are. Uh, what else have I got? Um, various bars of food because the aid stations are some 20 miles apart on this run. Uh, so unless you've got crew, uh, you are going to need to fend for yourself. So I've got some bars to eat and, um, and some paracetamol and that is about it really. Um, 133 kilometres, I, I think we should be okay. Oh yeah, obviously head torch and spare head torch and spare batteries. Um, oh, and survival blanket. One of the most important, if you, if you need it, it's one of the most important things you'll take with you. Um, not, not a space blanket, but a full body bag, basically, a survival bag that you can put yourself in. Um, and then all that is wrapped in a waterproof uh, container as well. Uh, so that's, that's my gift. Hello. Yeah, all right, not too bad. Uh, so we've made it to Snettison and the coast path. So we need to sign in, register, get our number. Hello. I think I'm number All right, there I am, number 11. Uh, we've got to have um, trackers put on for this event um, just so they can tell where we are and also people at home can watch where we're going. <laughs> Right, welcome to Snettisham on the Norfolk coast. We're going to run, I think we're running the whole of the Norfolk coast path pretty much. Uh, 83 miles from here all the way down to Great Yarmouth. Uh, there are about, I'd say, 50 to 60 runners here. Um, and we're starting any minute now. The idea of this is that we start at sunset. And if you're fast, you finish before sunrise. It's called the Sunrise Ultra. Huh? Right. Look at the view of the sunset. Eh? <laughs> Where oh, is the sunset? Yeah. Uh, this is Dan Lawson. The uh, views of, uh, of like uh, orange and pink. Can you look, look at the difference right, between on. Dan and me? <laughs> and Dan's going to finish about eight hours quicker than I am as well. Have a good one, Dan. Hello. Hello. 
dark pretty quickly uh, so most of this run is going to be done in the dark hopefully though we'll be able to get some footage for you of the uh, sunrise ultra what's your name uh, Dominic hello Dominic so uh, Dominic um, when was your first ultra uh, first ultra was October 2019 the White Stars uh, Jurassic Coast. And that was a 50k event? Yes. So it's taken you three years. Is this your longest ultra so far? Uh, no, I did the Thames Math 100 in May this year. Fantastic. Yeah. So this will be a walk in the park for you then. <laughs> a flat route, but less than 100 miles. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know about that, but certainly, uh, hopefully I can finish this one without injury, so. How did you manage in the um, Thames Path 100? It was good, I really, really enjoyed it, uh, a bit repetitive, could have done with a few hills and about 60 miles. Yeah. Um, picked what, up a bit of a niggle in the knee. What time did you manage? Uh, 23.08. Under 24, can't yeah. complain at that. No, I'm very happy with that time. Brilliant. <laughs> well, have a good run, Dom. Thank you very much. Uh, so we've only done about three kilometers and uh, it, it's, it's almost dark already, so head torch will be going on very shortly. Right, so we're five miles in to uh, the Sunrise Ultra. It is now dark, although I haven't yet put my head torch on. We're running through Hunstanton. Well, we're running along the coast path, the promenade in uh, Hunstanton. And I, I imagine that during the summer, this is very pretty. Uh, but it's dark and cold. It's raining. We're about 12 miles in. It's a boardwalk for a long way and uh, we've done about 26 kilometers. So that's what, 16, 17 miles. Brank Brancaster State yeah, stays and uh, we're, we're 27 and a half, 28k in. Uh, what time, how long have we been running? Three and a half hours? Uh, three There you go, yeah. something like that. Nice. You know, it's raining, it's a bit blowy, but it's all right, we're getting on okay. And this is, this is the first checkpoint. I think this is what I want. Uh, crisps? Yeah. Oh, actually, I'll take one of those Maybe cheeses as well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, right, yeah, that me, that's me done. Thank you. Seven miles of the Christmas trees look, and we're just coming up to the second checkpoint. Where are we now? You are at Wells next to the sea. Wells next to the sea. I'll have a bag of crisps if you've got anything. Big yeah. Big, big, big one. yeah. So and I'll have one of those baby bells again. So your boot, any particular flavour? Um, no, no, salt and vinegar. Uh, right, I'm really salted. Yeah.
so we've reached clay that was a hell of a journey um been running okay until um i don't know about 25 miles and then it just got really muddy and very very difficult underfoot and i've walked loads of that last section um but we're now at 38 miles at clay and we've got another 14 miles to the next aid station uh, what's the time looking at hang on a second Um, so 8 hours 44 minutes, I've got 63 kilometres on my watch but um, it's not quite that. So there we are, I've got coffee here and I've got pasta here. Right so Dan who we saw at the beginning, uh, Dan Lawson who as you know is the Le Jog holder. Is it Le Jog or is it Joggly holds? Le Jog, okay. Um, he is already approaching the next aid station, so he's going to finish in 13 hours, something like that. We're looking at about 19 to 20 hours now. I'm not now in any rush, having just gone through all of that mud. I am. Uh, I'm quite happy to just take my time. I'm going out in the cold and wet now. Does anybody want to come with me? Love to, mate. No? You're all staying here. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Enjoy. We'll see you in the office, yeah? See you later. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. And we're off. So after the mud, we now have four miles of shingle beach to contend with. How hilarious is that? I've never actually used them to be honest. I've been given a pair for Christmas last year and they haven't been out of the bag. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to hold my camera at the same time as running. It's not a good idea. So we're now at the highest point of this run. Uh, that isn't very high. Um, but we're running along the cliffs towards Chroma. Um, we're about 45 miles in and um, it's, we're about 11 hours I'm not, I shouldn't really go near the edge but there are there are definitely cliffs there you can't I, it's too dark isn't it <laughs> anyway it's pleasant running here after the shingle down the steps and along the lower promenade. It is three o'clock in the morning. Not feeling too bad. Back is aching a bit. But other than that, actually, got over my low period, which was in that mud at about 20 miles. That was horrendous. So I've got over that, I'm feeling okay. That's a very bright light that just came on as I ran past. Uh, it's um, Sea View Car Park, wherever that is. 11 hours, 48 minutes. according to my watch but probably not 50 miles according to the official race distance and it looks like the coast path goes that way Roman camp circular walk nine miles okay let's go this way is just a little bit further on. And even though it's still pitch black, uh, I can now hear birds singing. So the birds think it's morning time. Really looking forward to seeing the sun come up now, actually. 
it's been a long night but it's only it's only just after four o'clock in the morning so there's still uh, three hours I think of darkness that's the pier at Cromer We're about 3k from the next aid station. So we've made it to Overstrand aid station, which is 53 miles, I'm reliably informed. I thought it was 52, so bonus mile. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a half sunrise uh, happening, and some of those guys are sitting here. and. Um, my my bus mate has decided to call it a day. What's what's gone on? Uh. <laughs> come on, come on. What's your excuse? I'm not enjoying it. I'm sore in too many places and doing that with this without a GPX file isn't possible. Oh right, if you haven't got a GPX file, yeah. that's 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 going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got yeah. lost more times than I can count. Uh, but let me tell you, not all of us are enjoying it. That's that's <laughs> the truth of it. <laughs> So we've got about 19 kilometers to go to the next aid station and um, once we're there it's then 21k home. It's 6.30 in the morning here so I'm really hoping the sun comes up soon because I am I'm bush now. Uh, just like some sunshine to wake me up and uh, give me a bit of energy. Morning. It's 20 past 7 in the morning on Sunday and we're about 100k in with about 37, 36, 37 kilometers to go. But we've been walking along this beach for it seems like forever. There's a cliff, there's a little cliff here that I can't get up. And I'm just walking along the peach waiting for an opportunity to get off the peach. <sighs> Took my head torch off as soon as I thought it was light enough to see where I was going. <sighs> Absolutely done in now, but still over 20 miles to go. It's not happening today, unfortunately. Nothing going on in my legs, back's aching, still 20 miles to go. At one point, I was hoping I could get in about 9 a.m., uh, but it's, um, well, it's probably near that now. Um, more likely be getting in now between 1 and 2 p.m. So it's going to be close to 24 hours, 23 hours, something like that. But I'm going to get to the end. It'll just be very, very slow. I'm not going to DNF, that's for sure. The sun is out. I am feeling a little bit better now, running a little bit stronger. I'm still not going to do anything like the time I wanted to today. Um, it's, it is going to be closer to like 23 hours. But that's fine, it's just the way it is, isn't it? So, um, 
think it's about two kilometers, two or three kilometers to the next checkpoint. And then we've only got about 13 or 14 miles to go home or to the finish line. The finish line is at the Britannia Pier in Great Yarmouth. So. Searching for my aid station, which I really hope is really not far away. I've been hoping it's round the corner for the last 5k. There. Oh, I would have walked right past that then. Found it. Here it is. So this is the last aid station now. Uh, so we have arrived at Sea Pauling, which is actually not the final aid station. There are um, one or two uh, little smaller um, stops, uh, but there are only 14 miles to go. And that, to me now, my head, that seems like absolutely nothing. Um, considering what we've done and, and the, the night we've had. Um, it was, it was a bit grim. Hello there. <laughs> So we've been going for 19 hours and 50 minutes. We have 10 miles to go. We've done 121 kilometers in 19 hours, 50 minutes. It's pretty slow, but I am moving very slow. But only 10 miles to go now, 16 kilometers, and we will be done. Looking forward to it. That was really nice seeing those seals, amazing. Boats having a fundraiser. That's the sign saying coast path to the right. I am absolutely whacked. But we are only eight kilometers from Great Yarmouth and the finish line of the Sunrise Ultra. Five K to go. Just over 22 hours run. Legs aren't working anymore. Just trying to trot it in. Just over a kilometer to go in the Sunrise Ultra. I'm gonna do it in just under 23 hours. So this is it the end of like 83 or so miles. Well, that was far harder than I had been. So it was quite sunny um, earlier on, so I, I took loads of clothes off, but I need to get them back on again because yeah, I'm going to freeze. I know, I knew it was going to Have you missed someone? I missed you, sir. Oh. Okay, summary time. So um, I finished in 14th, which I, I'm going to have to be happy with. 22 hours and about 50 minutes, something like that. Um, so that'll do. Um, it was much, much harder than I expected it to be. Partly the weather, um, 
but also the terrain underfoot. So we had shingle, we had sand on a beach, um, we had boardwalk. Uh, the worst thing was just slippery mud, really, really slippery mud. In the early part of the race, when it poured with rain, that was really hard. Um, I would argue, I think Giles would probably agree, the race director, um, I wouldn't make this your first ultra. Maybe you could do the half as your first. I wouldn't make this um, your first um, flat race either. Um, you need to be up for the challenge. So it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, the weather might change it. If the weather's completely dry one year, it might change it completely. But um, from what I've done, um, I would say you, you, you need to be up for the challenge. You need to be ready for something that is going to hurt. Um, even, you know, it's, it's not 100, it's 83 miles. Uh, but that was very tough. And you can see by my time, okay, I'm not fully trained. I'm in a bit of a lull period. But uh, 22, nearly 23 hours for 83 miles of, of almost flat running, pretty much flat running. Uh, yeah, that was really, really hard. Uh, right, this is Giles, race director. Giles, I was just talking to my uh, other camera there, and I was saying that if you need to be up for the challenge for this race, it's not. It's not a race to be taken lightly. It's not a race that you think, oh, it's flat, I can just rock yeah. up and I'll finish it. Um, would you recommend that people who sign up for this are experienced ultra runners already? Definitely. I mean, um, we see it in the first time we did it, the, the, the dropout rate and the, there was a 50% completion rate. You know, it's not a, it's not a you know, common or garden, you know, summer run along the coast. The idea here is that you actually have a proper winter running experience. For that, you need to be comfortable operating in all the weathers, at night, largely in the dark, in all sorts of terrain, the ability to navigate in that environment. And that's kind of the, the kind of adventure we want to put on when we, when we set it out. And um, we don't apologise for that. Well, We're very, and, very upfront about that. And, and if that's what you set out to do, then that's definitely what we got. Yeah. Well, thank you for an experience, Giles. Pleasure, it's great having you. Cheers.